Ah, shalom. Hello. Good afternoon. Hi, I'm Josh Thomas, and you might know me from the Humanities Department at the Benjamin L. Hook Central Library of Memphis Public Libraries. And while I can say hello in Spanish and Hebrew and was able to look up online how to say good afternoon in Swedish, I am not fluent in any of those languages. Although, shameless plug here, if you want to use this time to brush up on or perhaps learn a new language, the library's website gives you access to an excellent language learning resource called Transparent Language Online. Check that out. But that's not what I'm here to talk about today. Instead, I want to talk about some books that I've recently read that were originally written in other languages before being translated into English and other languages. When I browse the library shelves, I often look for books that have been described as international bestsellers, popular enough in other countries that they were published in translation, as it offers a glimpse into other cultures and perspectives. I was particularly interested in talking about these books today, which is April 23rd as I record this, because this date is marked by UNESCO as World Book and Copyright Day, which the organization's website describes as a worldwide celebration to promote the enjoyment of books and reading. Incidentally, cool trivia fact, why is World Book Day observed on April 23rd? Well, it's the date on which the anniversary of the deaths of both William Shakespeare and Miguel de Cervantes, Don Quixote, both of whom passed away in 1616, are observed, although in reality they died about 10 days apart. It's a long story, partly explained by differences in the Julian and Gregorian calendars, but let's move on. So the first book I want to talk about is called The Waiter by a Norwegian author named Matthias Faldbakken, if I'm saying that right. It was originally published in 2017 and translated into English in 2018. Faldbakken is actually a fairly prominent contemporary artist who shows his works at a prestigious New York City gallery. But he also writes, and The Waiter is the first novel he's written under his own name. He's used a pseudonym previously. The Waiter is set in a prestigious and venerable, although perhaps weathered, Oslo restaurant called The Hills, which is actually the original Norwegian title of the book. The unnamed protagonist is quite naturally a longtime waiter at the restaurant whose existence and mental well-being are tethered to the predictable, traditional operation of the establishment that he faithfully and lovingly serves. As the publisher and others have noted, the title character is very reminiscent of the butler Stevens in Kazuo Ishiguro's masterpiece, The Remains of the Day, in that his perception of his self-worth is so encapsulated in the service he provides others and the importance he places on tradition and predictability. There's, there's not much action or even narrative in The Waiter. The principal conflict and story, which takes place over a couple of days, involves the arrival of a new customer, a young woman, whose unexplained presence amongst the usual group of patrons throws the waiter's routine and assumptions out of whack, as well as the school-aged daughter of a regular customer who the waiter is asked to look after for the afternoon while his father is in Copenhagen for a short business trip, forcing him to think of ways that he'll be able to keep the young lady occupied for the evening. One result of his attempt to entertain the young student is that we learn about the Romanesco cauliflower. I had to look that up, and it's a really interesting vegetable. I would check that out. The Waiter might not be for everyone, but it's a wonderful book in terms of its observations about the protagonist's presumptions of what is proper and appropriate behavior, and is in its attention to the meticulous detail of the main character's world and the level of importance, misplaced perhaps, but there nonetheless, that we can all place on the rituals of our life. Something that all of us are perhaps dealing with right now during these very unusual times. Here's another book that I recently read, although it had been on my list for quite some time. This is a psychological thriller called Kill the Next One by an Argentinian author named Federico Axat. It was originally titled La Ultima Salada, or Salida, or The Last Way Out in Spanish. The book was translated into more than 30 languages, and it's been optioned for a movie treatment, so it's something you might see at movie theaters one day, the cinema. The book has a pretty gripping opening premise. It begins, I'll read the first sentence, Ted McKay was about to put a bullet through his brain when the doorbell rang, insistently. The main character, Ted McKay, after meticulous planning that he later describes, is about to shoot himself in the head. Reluctantly, he goes to the door where a stranger who somehow knows his name as well as his secret plans of suicide makes him an offer. Instead of killing himself and forcing his wife to return home from her trip with the couple's daughters to find his lifeless body in his study, Ted is asked to participate in a chain of killings. First, he will justifiably, let's say, kill a man who presumptively killed his girlfriend 
but escaped conviction on a technicality. Then he will kill a man who, like Ted, wants to die because of a poor medical prognosis. In exchange, Ted will be killed by another assailant rather than take his own life. Well, suffice to say, nothing is as it seems, and McKay is forced to unravel the mystery behind the original offer, as well as the truth regarding what he knows about himself. The book is somewhat reminiscent of Dennis Lehane's Shutter Island, which I highly recommend, in that the main character is forced to face a reality different from the one we've been led to believe. As with most psychological thrillers, there are numerous twists and turns along the journey, and things aren't resolved until very nearly the last page of the novel. This is a really engrossing ride and one that I think is very much worth exploring. And if you do read it and you can tell me what the possum in the book represents, especially after the book's epilogue, please come by the library when we get reopened and, and tell me, or you can find me online. I want to briefly talk about another book. This one is from Sweden. I don't have the paper copy of it with me, called The Room, written by Jonas Carlson, who is actually a prominent actor in his native country. Carlson's first foray into writing was as a playwright, and The Room... This is actually his debut novel. The Room is a Kafkaesque satire, and that adjective might be enough to turn many readers off, but if you are a fan of Kafka, or even if you're not, you should definitely give this a try. Also, if you enjoy things like the movie Office Space or the television show The Office, you'll probably appreciate uh, the humor and dry wit of this book. Without going into too much detail, The Room is a surreal little fable, and I say little because it is a fairly short book, arguably a novella, about a confident bureaucratic office worker named Bjorn, who is assigned to a new division at an unnamed agency where he is surrounded by a number of stereotypical office co-workers who Bjorn is convinced are his inferiors. Things become uncomfortable when Bjorn discovers a room in the office corridor where he finds he can accomplish his best work, but only he is able to see the room. When Bjorn is in the room, his colleagues just see him standing in the hallway, looking dazed and confused. Bjorn's behavior generates conflict in the workplace, forcing his reluctant manager to broker an agreement amongst the colleagues that will allow everyone to coexist in their own perceived reality. Again, this satire of corporate culture and office politics and perhaps mental health will probably not be everyone's cup of tea, but it's worth checking out this fairly quick read and perhaps even asking some friends to give it a try as it invites uh, discussion and debate. And finally, and perhaps my favorite of this quartet of books is a recent translation of a book from Israel titled The Coincidence Makers by Yoav Bloom. Like several of the authors I've talked about, Bloom actually has a career outside of writing. He's, he's also a software developer. Bloom has written three novels, all of them bestsellers in his native Israel, but The Coincidence Makers was his debut, published back in 2011. It's the first to be translated into English, as well as in a number of other languages. The Coincidence Makers is classified as fantasy, you see the little sticker here, although I would describe it as more in the realm of magical realism. The main narrative of the book involves three friends, Guy, Emily, and Eric, at least in the English version, who have all been trained at the same time as coincidence makers, seemingly normal human beings, although Guy is a former imaginary friend whose job is to create coincidences in order for desired outcomes to occur. Examples are making sure that intended lovers meet one another, having an accountant discover his destiny as a great poet, or orchestrating the accidental discovery of penicillin. It somewhat reminds me of the movie The Adjustment Bureau, which was based on a Philip K. Dick story, if you remember that, but with a much more benign purpose, although this book does involve a renowned hitman who leads a seemingly charmed professional life. One of the humorous touches in the book is that, and there's a number of them, but one is that between certain chapters, Bloom includes excerpts from the textbooks the coincidence makers used in the course of their training, with titles such as Technical Methods in Coincidence Making, and a workbook from the course Free Choice, Boundaries, and Rules of Thumb, Part 3. The realism that Bloom brings to the notion of people amongst us who are busy pulling strings in order to orchestrate seemingly random occurrences is a fun touch that brings to mind the magical world of the Harry Potter series. At least it made me think of that. At the heart of the book is a love story as Guy pines for Cassandra, a fellow imaginary friend whom he met during that part of his existence, but to say any more would be to give too much away. The Coincidence Makers is a beautiful tale exploring the notions of fate, free will, and love. It's also it's really just a fun read, and uh, I'm a big fan of it. All of these books, conveniently enough, are available as ebooks from the Memphis Public Libraries. So if you have downloaded the Libby app on your smart device, 
uh, you can borrow and read these books now, assuming they haven't been checked out already. And if they have, you can always put them on hold and get in, get in line. I hope many of you have a chance to read some or all of these books or many of the others that we have available uh, to download. And if you do, I hope you enjoy them as much as I did. Well, that is all for today. I appreciate everyone uh, tuning in and listening, and I hope I'll have the chance to tell you about more books soon. In the meantime, hope you all stay safe and healthy. And uh, as always, thanks for remembering to start here at the Memphis Public Libraries.